Hello, artists and dreamers. Welcome to Creative Photo Folk, the little corner of the internet devoted to all aspects of creative photography. In this week's artwork tour, we'll be taking a stroll through the creation of my award-winning image, Metamorphosis. So welcome everyone to my image in Metamorphosis. So Metamorphosis, like many of my images, really had no specific plan. And it came about because in Australia, on Australia Day, we all get a holiday. And at the time, we had a tradition that we would go sit by a beach, set up, eat all day, just hang out looking at the water for a whole day. And I get bored fairly easily. So I thought this would be a really good opportunity to create an image while we sat there all day. So I threw into the car a, so that is a pink dressing gown, a silk pink dressing gown that I picked up at a charity shop. And I had just happened to buy that mask from a craft store. And I probably threw in a whole bunch of other stuff to just to see what struck me in the moment. I had no plan at all. And that is how Metamorphosis came about. So in retrospect, I can make up all sorts of meanings about this and I will tell you about them later. But in reality, there was no plan when I created this. So let's talk about how it was created. So first of all, we'll talk about how I shot it. So basically, I put on my little robe and I sat down in the water, but then I held my mask over my face. So I put one hand out and held the mask over my face. The next image I took would have been the other arm. So this time I've got this one in the water and this one over my face. And that's because in the final image, I knew that I would have the two arms out and I wanted the mask to just be sitting there so without me holding it on. Hopefully that makes sense. Then I took off the robe and basically held it up and threw it about in the water. So there's a couple of shots as examples here, but I did that quite a lot. You'll see it was actually quite a bit more shallow than it looked. So that is essentially that. I think I also shot the sky at the same time same day and the birds also were shot on the same location. So let's go into how it was created. All right, so we started out with sky, really darkened that down, popped in my girl. Then I have masked away the fingers. So using that other shot where the hand was out this side, masked away the fingers. Then I blurred the water and I didn't blur her. Now I didn't know at the time that this was going to become a popular technique called the Adamski effect. That is a technique I teach in a different tutorial called the Adamski effect. But basically, I just masked myself away and then blurred everything else. And then I've darkened up the scene of the horizon so it fit the sky a bit better. This will make sense later when you see the wings pop in, but this was the reflection of the wings. And for that, I don't know how I did it. Presumably, I copied it, flipped it, and then blurred it. So here is where I get a little bit artistic. Now, I am not an artist by any means. I don't know how to paint. But what I did here was got a, it says here smoke. So presumably it was a smoke shaped brush. I'm not, I can't remember whether I created it or bought it or got it from somewhere else. And then I made it pink and I varied the pink so that every time I painted a brush stroke, it changed color. So I teach very much in depth about how to use your Photoshop brushes for these kinds of effects in my course, Exposing Illusions. I won't go into it today because it is quite detailed about how to create your own brushes and then how to manipulate the way that the brush behaves. But this is essentially what I did. Then I built up even more. So this was just a process of painting, 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 getting shapes I liked. Now, let's work through this individually. And there's a lot going on here. I didn't realize quite how much work I put into this. Here's the first bit. That was me throwing it. So basically, I just threw it over and over and over again. So I had lots to work with. Okay, this is all higgledy piggledy, but basically then I've now popped in that arm that was holding the mask that we needed to get out there and tidied up the where the hand was by using the other image that was shot for this arm. Just blurred that up so that now everything kind of fit. And for some reason, I didn't want the blur in front of her, just around her. So I actually removed it from just her reflection. Now I'm adding in even more bits to create the kind of look of wings. Even more bits. Oh, so I made it much bigger for that bit to make it blurry and closer to camera. And I've done a little bit of toning to that. Then exactly the same on the other side. Put in even more bits, some little flicky bits at the side here. And so that's how the wings were done. Then brought up the exposure a little bit, added in my seagull, added in my birds. Now, you might be wondering what this line is. And there's a few of them around. And I'm not sure why they're there. Photoshop 
sometimes when you make selections, it doesn't select everything. It just leaves these little streaks. And it's something you've really, really got to be aware of because if they come out in print, then you've got to reprint the whole thing. I've heard someone call this digital grease, and I, I really like that. So it's just these kind of leftover remnants that appear. So I'm assuming it's going to pop out eventually because there's no way it's in the final. But anyway, just ignore that for now. So I'm just adding in those birds, and I've done that using blend modes just to drop out the sky that was initially there. Added my toning, which makes a world of difference in this case. So really, though, I've primarily made it warmer. I've made it more contrasty. I've made it more saturated. That's pretty much it. But there is a lot of toning going on as usual. So then I added some even more flames up here because this bit, it just, the symmetry was off for me. So I just wanted to fill that out to really direct the eye down towards her. Final toning. And that is metamorphosis. So this got accepted into a really big exhibition and they asked me to print it quite big. And it's too big to fit into my home. So and the exhibition was for a whole year, which was great. So I didn't have to store the image. But now I've sent it out to one of my state politicians. So it's hanging in his office at the moment. This is an interesting one. It has won some competitions. It's been featured on the promotion for some, some competitions. And there's just something about, I think, the blend of actual physical photographs with this kind of paint that really appeals to people. You know, it's not something you see a lot. So this is why I like to occasionally blend something more artistic with actual reality because it is it tends to be quite popular every time I've done this the images have done really really well so the description that I actually prefer to talk about is that this was created pretty much exactly a year after I first started creating this photoshop art and for me it was really about coming alive like it was almost a it's called metamorphosis because it was like the phoenix rising from the water so to me, the water suggests like a baptism and the flames and the wings suggest a phoenix. So it's about some kind of new beginning or metamorphosis. As for the mask and the kind of faceless aspect of this image, it was because I wholeheartedly believed that I was not creative in any way. And then I became an artist with a solo exhibition in the largest gallery in my region. And this made me a really very firm believer in how with hard work, anyone can reinvent themselves. And that's something that in the last couple of years, I've leaned into even so much more, even though this was created maybe five, six years ago. So ideally, I want this piece of art, Metamorphosis, to act as an inspiration for anyone who dreams of being something different or better, because it's definitely possible. And I am proof of that many times over now. So that is indeed what metamorphosis has become to represent, even though at the time I just threw some things in my car and just played around. And this is why I say that anyone really can be an artist because the technique can be learned. I can teach you exactly how I created this image. And I do inside my course, Exposing Illusions, I can tell you how to replicate this effect. But the ideas will just come in the process. You don't need to have them first up. You just need to have some things to work with some know-how, and then you will create it as you go. I never, ever thought about having the flames in this or the birds or blurring the water or any of that. I just wanted to put on that cape, see what happens, and this is what came of it. So thank you for listening to my little story about metamorphosis. I don't believe creativity is a gift given to a lucky few, but a skill that anyone can tap into if they just turn on their creativity dial. So if you'd like to tune into the creativity channel, make sure to subscribe as I continue to show you how easy creativity can flow. See you again soon.